Okay, family. So this is Tasha Mom Bear Homesteading. I'm about to get into it. I'm going to show you a tour, show you what the backyard is looking like. Really not the backyard because you know it's a, it's a hot mess because of the septic, but I'm going to show you the side where I've started putting some plants out and kind of see what I'm doing, but we're going to talk about composting. So hubby for my birthday, one of my gifts was a composting tumbler. That's the big plastic ones that turn. You put your composting uh, elements in it, turn it, and I'm going to show you that too. So I'm going to show you a tour. I want to talk about composting first though and composting, what can go into composting, how you do it and how these tumblers work. So, you know, there's a couple ways that you can do composting, right? You can have a dedicated space where you have some sort of three or four wall structure that you put the same elements in. And then every few weeks, two to three weeks, you're going in there with a shovel or whatever, and you're turning it. You're turning the material so that it can continue to cook and meld together and all that good stuff. Um, the tumbler, I love it for several different reasons. One, I love it because if you're a new gardener like me, you're new to growing food, you're new to composting, you're new to all these different um, areas, right? And so I feel like it's a nice baby step to be composting. And it's easy because you can have this simple thing if you have a um, maybe not an apartment. I don't know how stinky it's going to get. So possibly if you have some sort of balcony and then you have a tumbler, yes, it's small in the sense that would totally fit. You could totally do it. Um, but it still might be too stinky to do if you're in that type of setting. But if you have a home of any, of any proportion, like you have a home with some sort of backyard, that's your own space, whether you rent it or own it, whatever, this is perfect. Okay. For a small space. Um, you know, yes, if you have some large homestead and you have the space, we actually are going to probably look into setting up a more structured composting later. But again, baby steps for us. So absolutely love this. Some different stuff that can go on this composting. It's a little different because in the larger kind that's like on the ground that's bigger, you can put some put some bigger elements in it. With the tumbler, you know, the tumblers, most of them are made from plastic. And I'm going to show you exactly what mine looks like and what it's made of. You can see. Um, but you want to put lighter materials in there, okay, because it is plastic. So you're not putting big branches, big tree branches, really pokey, heavy materials because you want it to work, okay? So let me look at my notes, you guys, real quick. Um so food scraps, obviously, right? So onions, different peels, banana peels, orange peels, um, eggshells, coffee grounds, <coughs> um, old bread. The thing with it, uh, food scraps is think about anything that you put in there. The smaller you make it, the better because then the faster it will work. Now, if you don't care and you plan on just, just cooking this bad boy for months and months and months and you're okay, go ahead. It's fine to put in that, the, you know, the whole banana peel or the whole shells, but that stuff is going to take longer to break down. So just simply cutting up the banana um, peels could help the process. A lot of people ground their eggshells or crunch them up. Even something like that is better than, um, and will help it faster because you definitely want the stuff that's in those, the elements that are in the, those um, ingredients. Okay. Grass clippings is amazing. Small um, branches and different things that you've pulled, right? Different clippings that you've clipped from smaller branches. Just think softer branches, right? Don't be putting any kind of hardcore, hard sticks in there, okay? You can, okay, but um, again, you want the tumbler to work for what its kind of purpose is on a smaller level. Um, other smaller clippings, leaves, right? Sawdust. Um, unbleached, unbleached paper products can go in there. Um, <clears throat> so different, a lot of different stuff can go in there. You can throw in a little bit of uh, dirt in there as well to kind of mold it all together. But baby, let me tell you, those grass clippings, that's what really brings it together. To me, in my opinion, those, once those uh, leaves and grass clippings start breaking down, yeah, the food a little bit, but boy, I tell you, I don't know if you've ever put grass clippings in anything and just let it sit for a week. Um, those bad boys get real stank real fast. Okay. So 
a lot of people too will tell you when you have a first when you first have a tumbler you can buy certain composting activators um or starters if you will but any kind of green plant is a natural starter so just the grass clippings alone is a natural starter for the composting like i told you they get real stank real fast they work okay don't sleep on some grass clippings um but those are different things that you can put in it. Um, you know, the traditional piles that you turn yourself um, with a shovel or whatever, um, typically those get turned anywhere from every couple weeks to every four or five weeks. Just depends on, you know, schedules and, and how much people want it to cook. There's all types of variables, like I say, with most things, right? Weather has a huge thing to do with this. With the composting tumbler, you can have it in the shade. You can have it in the sun. Obviously, if you have it in the sun, it's going to cook uh, faster, right? Um, so think about those things. Think about where you place it. Right now, I mine's empty because I just got it a couple days ago. It's sitting um, along the house. You're going to see it's just sitting behind the house. But I plan to move it a little bit farther out um, because of the smells, obviously. Um, and then with the tumbler, you know, unlike, you know, turning it because it's a larger pile every few weeks, you can actually turn the tumbler every few days if you want or once a week. OK, again, just depends on how hot you want that core to get before you start moving it around. OK, but there's not a right or wrong necessarily for, hey, somebody who turns it every couple days to somebody who leaves it for a week and then turns it okay just know the only difference is it's sitting right and so it's working and that that core is just getting you know is just working right and then once you turn it you're introducing air you're you know you're introducing these other elements um in the mixing that is helpful as well okay um let's see and then you'll just keep doing that you won't fill it so obviously because it's not an outside structure or an open space it's a tumbler it's only so big depending on the size you get um so you only want to you know you want to be able to continue to turn it okay so you're not going to want to fill it to where now you can't turn it it can't mix it can't meld together um you know that type of thing okay I'm super excited to use mine. Um, we're going to start using ours probably today. I just kind of needed to do a downplay with the family on, hey, this is what's going to go in it. This is where we're going to keep scraps in the kitchen until we take them out once a night out there. Um, and how we're going to how we're going to start getting composting into our life. You know, um, I talked to the next door neighbor the other day. She she gave me a tour of her backyard. I mean, just beautiful. And she has this huge, beautiful composting like box area that, you know, her husband made for her. And um, she's like, oh, I just give it away. She doesn't even use it anymore. And then he's the one out there turning. I'm just not a big fan. I know my strengths and weaknesses. And I just know that that sounds like no fun at all turning this big pile in a box and trying to you know keep it cooking so i don't know that's my two thoughts um let's get into the tour now i'm going to show you a small clipping right now of what the area looked like before i started um getting it ready for what is going to be the beginning of my garden this season and then i'm going to show you kind of what it looks like right now today um so much more to do but i'm going to show you what we've got started so far and then i'll take you around the corner and show you my composting tumbler all right see you guys in a few all right family it's mama bear homestead i just wanted to show you guys um again that piece of the yard and um kind of a before picture so you can really see what we're about to do about to take this hedge way back it's going to expose a bunch of dead branches but we've got to get it back um we're going to the dirt right here is all above the uh you know edging of the cement so we're going to be raking this back raking up all this um area up so that i can get it ready to put my initial beds uh, and i'll show you what i'm going to be doing um, but we're going to be cleaning this all up so we'll be doing those hedges cleaning up the, all this gravel taking it down to a starting point as you guys see there's some some flowers that were planted before coming up um, so Probably more will be coming up in this area, so I might do um, 
just some flower, basic flower beds in this area. And then we have this. If we get this far, we're going to be cleaning up this hedge. Uh, not hedge, this bush. You see that it has literally uh, blackberry bushes, vines going all through it. And then just walking you just around the corner. This used to be beautiful. This used to be this, this beautiful bush. There's like some... Um, Oh, I forget the name, but there's a beautiful bush here. I'm going to take this down all the way to the bottom. And then I have um, this baby that is starting to already, I'm a little late in the game, you guys. It's already starting to bloom a little bit. So we don't want to cut certain things because it won't bloom if I cut it. But I'm going to de-head a bunch of this stuff at points where I can do that safely so it will continue. And then I'm just going to take it back a little bit. Cut it back a little bit, cut it a little bit off of the edge. Um, and just define that a little bit more. These entire beds, same thing. See how the dirt level was higher? Basically, the only thing we did for maintenance over here was just get it off of the fence, the dirt, pulled it back. But we still have to really take this dirt down on a few more levels. Okay, so I'll bring you guys back. All right, family. <clears throat> Wanted to show you the update. Just showed you a video of what it looked like before. It's basically the maples coming in. You'll see the, the um, hedge back there. It had to go back quite a bit. So we have quite a bit of exposed. And here she comes on cue as soon as I have, as soon as I have you guys on video. One second. <sighs> okay, I'm back. This little diva. Anyway, so we got the maple starting to sprinkle a little bit. Had to cut back the hedge quite a bit. So lots of exposed, but had to, take down this dirt took down the dirt probably at least two inches and then we got our beds started got a blueberry back there some basic stuff here small little herbs garden and this isn't even probably a third of the herbs i'm going to do but i have these towers over here then I'm gonna set up and do a bunch more herbs and strawberries. Got some ginger back there. Got some, a bunch of different stuff here, mostly carrots. Back here, we still have to address this, but have my elderberry all the way from Florida coming in nicely. Go on, girl. You see that coming in good? sat in water for probably a week and a half sort of coming in and it's already gotten much bigger since i put it outside um, a few days back a few things back there working on this pond you guys oh wow i see something got here and flipped over the solar thing that's interesting that means something got in the water last night and actually flipped that over. So we've got to seal this. It's not holding water. We thought it was holding water, but it's not. And then let me, yard is as usual, waiting for septic. Let me come back here and just show you guys <clears throat> what hubby got me. So this is not where this is gonna go, but this is just for now so you can see Here's the hole that you would put everything in, right? Close it, and then it, it turns, right? Doesn't have the handle kind, um, but clearly spins, and it's quite a good size. It's, it's quite a good size, you guys, for me, for a beginner. Now, I also saw some videos of these not being so good. Some people saying they didn't like them. And that obviously a traditional composting um, is better, but we'll see over time. I think this is a great option for somebody like me who's brand new to gardening. And where I'm probably gonna put it is where you see those bricks right there. Probably gonna put it right there. A little bit farther away, and uh, but close enough. Trees over there. Hopefully the septic doesn't go too far over there to where I lose those those beautiful trees over there you guys and 
And then we'll, what will probably happen here, you guys, the plan is going to put in some pavers, some small stepping stones, and then um, way more plants. This whole patio is gonna have plants. And then um, I still have so much more food to bring out that started inside. I have, um, we'll have potatoes out here. We'll have peppers out here. We'll have, um, what else? Tomatoes out here. We'll have cabbage out here. We'll have a uh, strawberry tower out here. Way more herbs. So there's still a lot to do. Working on another project for this wall that I will show you guys next time um, so you get to see what we're doing for this wall. All right, hope you guys are well. Kitty says bye. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Kitty. Say bye-bye. All right, guys.